comes to Breath of the Wild 2, we are left in the dark of what is supposed to be the darkest Zelda game, even darker than that of Majora's Mask. But with all games and with all time passing, it is that darkness that leaks and rumors come out of the woodwork. And it looks like it's that time again for another pretty interesting Breath of the Wild 2 rumor or leak or whatever you want to call it. And you know, I'm covering this because you guys really liked it when I covered the last big Breath of the Wild 2 leak or rumor. I find these videos and speculation to be very fun and enjoyable. This way we can discuss, pick apart, and ponder on what could work and what seems to be a little too out of the blue. But what's cool about this specific rumor or leak is that it entails on something that's supposedly gonna come, you know, a Nintendo Direct. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for one, but uh, let's see what's going to happen this month. What's up guys, it's HMK once again with another Breath of the Wild 2 video. Once again, this is a rumor slash leak, so all of this should be taken in with a grain of salt. I'm going to break down this rumor slash leak, tell you what I think about it and what could work and how it could be applied to the past game and what we can look forward to in the future of Breath of the Wild 2. With that being said, for the safety of hype, I'm going to ask you to strap on in to dive directly into the noise. Now for starters, this rumor slash leak has a couple of days on it, but when it comes to me and covering rumors or leaks or anything of the sort, I like it for it to stew a little bit for a couple of days, maybe even a week, you know, just before someone could come out, aha, I got you guys, it was just a prank type deal. So when things aren't confirmed out and out news, I like to take my time a bit when it comes to covering these. All right, so let's dive right into it, shall we? This rumor slash leak comes out of Reset Era, where this username Bochica, Bochica, I hope I'm saying that right. Apparently they got friends with the Nintendo of Europe that are in charge of the European localizations of Nintendo live streams and yes, Nintendo Directs. And this information is apparently coming out of what is supposed to be the next Nintendo Direct. I know we all have been waiting for it, it's almost 200 days, I'm about to bake a cake. But honestly when it comes to the next Nintendo Direct, I really feel that Nintendo's not gonna do it until Animal Crossing New Horizons is out and about. So the end of the month. I mean we have to have one before E3, we're pretty much driving blind at this point. But here are the kickers when it comes to the Breath of the Wild sequel and the trailer or teaser that we could get in this Nintendo Direct. According to the leak. We would see the different peoples one by one after the victory of the first game. This is how the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer is going to start. After the fall of the Calamity, we're going to see the towns and villages that we already know of from Breath of the Wild 1. And for the most part, they're going to stay relatively the same, except for Hateno Village, which apparently is going to be way bigger and have a lot more people living within this village, which actually does make sense for a ton of reasons. The biggest being that Hateno, and of course Fort Hateno, acted as a very successful vanguard during the Great Calamity. They didn't fall during the Great Tragedy. The village was able to stay completely intact, as well as the stories and the cultures that were spread around the village, thus acting as the safest and pretty much most optimal place to live given its track record. And that's just one reason. Another big reason is that of course when you complete certain side quests, Link takes up his residence there. You can get a house in Hateno Village. And with the calamity over, it could be possible that Zelda could move in with Link. You know, of course, to continue his role as her royal knight. And given his deeds across the land of Hyrule, who wouldn't want to live near the hero? thus attracting more and more people. And of course, another gigantic reason is that an ancient furnace is actually at Hateno Village as well as Pura on the hill. So the Sheikah not only have a base of operations within Hateno Village, but they also have one of their power sources. This will lead Pura and the Sheikah to lend their aid to the village and Zelda and Link while in Hateno Village. And of course to the people when creating defenses against whatever threats may come their way. So when it comes to this detail about Hateno Village being bigger and better and more people living there, I actually believe it given to what we know from the past game moving forward. I mean it's pretty remote and away from all the mess. 
Moving on, apparently next up in the trailer, everywhere in the field in this time of peace will be tiny houses built and sprinkled across the land. Which could make sense as there is a ton of ruins sprinkled all across Hyrule that the people could build on top of and which people can create little outposts and communities in order to try and take back the land after the Great Calamity. And apparently a lot of these outposts will be inhabited by farmers. It goes on to explain that the trailer goes at a pretty fast pace showing a lot of different things at that point. But at one point, suddenly, an earthquake would disturb the peace of the different peoples. Then something will come into view that will block the sun. At that point, the trailer then views over to each descendant of each champion, all in their own specific region. And when we hear this, we obviously think Teba from the Rito that is not really descended from, but I could say following in the footsteps of Rivali, and then of course the others with Sidon who is the brother of Mipha from Zora's River, Riju who is descended from Obosa from the Garuda region, and of course Yonobo who is descended from Daruk, the mountains of the Goran region. In the trailer they will all look up around the same time seeing something that is blocking out the sun across their various regions. And there, in the distance, we will see Hyrule Castle floating above the ground so high up that blocks the sun, casts an ominous shadow across Hyrule. Which definitely makes sense because that I feel is what is being alluded to in the last trailer. A lot of people believe that a couple of things could be happening when Hyrule Castle is rising out of the ground. One, that a divine beast would be coming out from the bottom of Hyrule Castle. Two, which I believed is that Ganon's tower would be coming out from underneath Hyrule Castle. But it's looking like if this rumor is to be believed, that Hyrule Castle will be floating in the sky, possibly thanks to Ganon's power, Ganondorf's power after awakening. And my take on this is that it could be a very interesting way for them to flip the script on what Breath of the Wild 1 was when it comes to going to the final boss. You can go there at any time, but this time around, you won't be able to reach the final boss, which I want to believe that's going to be up in the floating Hyrule Castle, unless you have certain things done already or a certain item that will lead you to the castle hung up in the sky. Hey, maybe we have to hitch a ride on Von Meadow. And of course, for those who read up on creating a champion, this notion of Ganondorf at the top of a Hyrule castle or a castle floating in the sky is something that they played around with in development of the first Breath of the Wild. So for this idea to be revisited, I definitely could believe it. And after that shot, it's going to be a montage of a bunch of other pictures leading into a moment that we actually see Link in Zelda for the first time in this specific trailer. And then it cuts to black. And while apparently there is no title reveal, it will say Holiday 2020. And look, I am a sucker for any type of leak rumor when it comes to my game, Breath of the Wild 2, baby, for 2020. Let's go. And if we were to believe that part, combining this with the notion that this is coming from a Nintendo Direct that's supposedly coming soon, then going into something like E3, where we'll have a big Breath of the Wild 2 blah bonanza because we still don't know the big flagship game that Nintendo's gonna have at the end of this year. It could lead to a name reveal, a gameplay reveal, and a release date reveal. Coincide with everything stating holiday 2020. Let's stay it on track, boys. And hey, listen, I know some of you guys are tired of me, you know, saying Holiday 2020 or Zelda 2020, Breath of the Wild 2 for 2020. I believe Nintendo has done some weird stuff like this before where they reveal the game, especially a sequel, and then they just blow out and have it come out the year. But when it comes to the validity of this rumor slash leak, I want to say that this plays it very safe. So that's why it could be believable. But one thing I like to put to their credit is that the fact they talk about other aspects in this Nintendo Direct that could add to their cause, but I want to know what you guys think. I'm going to leave a link to the leak slash rumor in the description box below so you can figure it out for yourself. But other than that, what did you think about it? Be sure to leave a comment and share up the video to keep the conversation going. Be sure to like and subscribe as I post content every week. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters for help making this video happen. If you want to find out how you can support HMK for just a dollar a month, please check out my Patreon page.
All right, guys, until the next Zelda or Breath of the Wild 2 video, I can feel it, can you? This has been HMK, and I'll check you guys later.